as you know, advanced oral cancers are the main issues in India. We have a lot of oral cancers and uh, we have to manage them by day to day, in our day to day practice. So basically, uh, advanced oral cancers are T3 and T4 advanced oral cancers and uh, they can present with N0, N1, 2 or N3 nodes in the neck. And these N3 nodes can be operable nodes, maybe inoperable nodes. So we go ahead with clinical examinations, of course the biopsies and all other things, but with that we have special imagings. And this imaging includes uh, CT scan MRI, not only that, but PET CT and PET MR. Now these are the things which will tell us what status, clinical status the patient is in. And based on that, we'll be planning our treatment modalities. Basically, T3, T4 oral cancers are treated by surgery. So some kind of neck dissection is always warranted. And it all depends on your clinical examination and imaging, whether the patient is in N0, 1, 2, 3, whether he's operable or not. So depending on that, we'll take our operative decisions. We operate about uh, 200 patients in a month and uh, most of them are rural cancers. So, uh, and we are uh, two senior head and neck surgeons in our team and then we have four or five other people and the fellows. Uh, we, we analyze and uh, take, you know, keep track of our patients. And then based on those retrospective analysis, we come to a conclusion that what should be the best uh, way to manage. Of course, there are clinical guidelines and, you know, say like NCCN and uh, AJCC and all other uh, um, literature and data support based on that we can have. But the most important thing at our place is multidisciplinary team. So we have medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, surgical oncologists, pathologists, radiologists, and jointly we decide the line of management for that patient. See, in India, the commonest cancer is oral cancer in male. You know, if we consider the entire uh, epidemiology, it's because of the tobacco chewing, and betel nut and areca nut. So these are the risk factors in our country, which causes oral cancer. And uh, it is not the smoke tobacco, it's the chew, chewing tobacco, which causes oral cancer. And that's very rampant in our country. So that's the reason we get a lot of patients. Now, compared to Western American and you know European counterpart of oral cancer, they get more tongue and floor mouth cancers. But in my country, the, the major uh, chunk of our oral cancer patients are buccal mucosa and buccoalveolar sulcus cancers. So that's the major difference between the you know, group of patients coming to us compared to Western part. Oral cancer is the best model for prevention because you know why it is produced. Most of the time it is because of tobacco. Oral cavity can be examined very easily, you know. Examination of oral cavity in a mirror is inexpensive. You know? So the patient who is chewing tobacco can just examine his mouth and there are definite precancerous lesions like leukopachias and erythropleukias. So if you teach the community that these are the risk lesions which can convert into cancer and if they can come in time after seeing then oral cavity having leukoplicase or erythroplicase you can prevent these cancers or else at least you can detect them early the problem is awareness there are ngos which are you know trying hard there are healthcare systems and healthcare uh, organizations which are, which are trying hard Government 
is supporting but not to an extent which you know uh, the healthcare workers would expect them to uh, say like uh, chewing tobacco can be banned but uh, because of the political reasons it's not being done there the best preventable cancer in the world is oral cancer and uh, it can be easily prevented if you have good awareness and if you can convince the population in a right way and more so convince the policy makers